Okay, so now in our previous lectures, we created the basic interface. So we have a place to display how much money our business currently has. We also have a count for how many stores uh, of lemonade stands for this example and a button to buy our store. So let's go ahead and wire this up so we can see this increment. And this is where we have to write a little bit of code. And again, this is for beginners. You don't have to know a lot of C sharp. As long as you've programmed a little bit before, you should be able to follow along. So the first thing we're going to come down here is come down to assets and let's make a folder for our scripts. And so I'm going to right click this and choose create and choose folder. And I'm going to type in scripts here for our folder. And I'm also going to make another folder, and this time I'm right-clicking down here, and it gives us the same result. I'm going to make one for scenes. So we have two folders, because we've got this scene, this main scene, that's sitting down here in our asset. And I'm just going to drag that into our scenes folder, keep things, you know, a little bit more organized. And then I'm going to double-click on our scripts folder so we know we're inside of our scripts folder. So we just have two folders now, our scenes and our scripts. And this main, if I double click on it, is our main scene. So we can see right up here our, our main camera, our canvas. And of course, we have a, an event system. It's provided by Unity. You don't have to worry about it. But everything you can see that we've done so far is just basically laying out the interface. It's real simple. So now let's go ahead and create our first script. I'm going to come down here and right click and say Create. And I'm going to choose C Sharp Script. And I'm just going to go ahead and name this store. And it'll automatically add this .cs on the end in case uh, you're curious about the C Sharp script. I just named this store. So this is our store script you're going to use to buy um, stores here using this button. So if I double click this script that's gotten created, and if I double click it, it's going to launch Visual Studio. Now, depending on the addition of Unity you're running, it might launch MonoDevelop. And that's perfectly fine. Both of these systems are perfectly going to work the same. Um, but just to keep you aware, if it doesn't look exactly like this and, and your code editor happens to be Mono Development, that's going to be perfectly fine. So you'll notice here we have a use this for in, initialization, start. And we have an uh, update is called once per frame. And hopefully, you know, even though this is a basic course, you probably are a little bit familiar with these. But if not, I'm going to explain them. This is anything inside of here that we put will run just when the game starts. It's only going to run one time. Anything inside of the update here that we put will happen every frame, every time uh uh, an image is shown on the screen and it depends upon what device how many frames per second and that's something common in game development we'll talk about uh, is how many frames per second something's running but this will actually literally get called every time uh, a frame is shown so if you're running something at 60 frames a second this will have to happen thir uh, 60 times a second so in our designs we're going to be looking not uh, to put a lot inside of updates except what needs to happen every single frame. What happens in the start is what we use a lot of times to initialize our game. So with that little bit of explanation out of the way, let's go ahead and start creating what we need for our, our button to, to buy our stores. Now, what do we need inside of our stores to keep track of how many stores we have? Well, we're going to need a variable. And so <clears throat> we're going to create a simple variable to keep track of the count of the stores. So I'm going to go hit here and I'm going to I'm going to type in store count and just and put a semicolon here. Now this right away creates an integer to hold stores. So hopefully you know a little bit of something about variables, but even if you're new to them, we're going to take it slow enough so so this will be be easy for you. But this is going to create inside of our store a, a way where we can keep track of how many we have. And what we can do is come down here inside of our start and initialize it with one. So we can come down here and say store count equals one. And this is just an internal way for this class. And you'll notice up here, it says class store. That for this particular 
instance of this store to keep track of how many stores we have. So every time we click that buy button, we want to inc increment this by one. So let's go ahead and create the method to buy a store. And so you can follow along here if this is real new to you. Um, it might be a little bit confusing, but what we're going to do is we're going to take it real simple and create, when we type void here, that basically means we're creating a function that's not going to return anything. We're not expecting a result to come back from it. It's going to come back with nothing. And I'm going to type buy store, and I'm going to actually go ahead and say on click here, because we're going to do this when we click the button. And this is a way to make it a little easier to know exactly what's going to trigger this function. And I use this open and close parentheses, and I, we're following along here just like it, it has it in these other areas. So part of this is just the syntax of learning how to uh, program. So don't let it scare you, just follow along. And so I'm going to use the open and close braces, and you'll notice that here in um, our Visual Studio, all the red squiggly lines went away. If I, if I have a, a problem, like for example, like this, you'll see these red squiggly line, lines. So these red squiggly lines are kind of an indication things aren't quite right. And all I need to do is get it to look, this buy store on click, your goal here is just to get it to look just like these others. So none of these are doing anything except this. When, when start happens, our store count equals one. And when we do our buy store on click, we just want to add one to this. Now we can do this two ways. One way is to say store count equals store count plus one. And this is a very clear, obvious uh, way of declaring that you want to add one to store count. So we take our store count and we're, gonna, we're telling do C sharp here that we want to increment this by one. Store count is going to equal the store count plus one. So once store count is equal to two, Store count's going to equal to 2 plus 1, and so on and so on. And this is going to hold that store count in it. So this is really simple. I'm going to save it. Now, there's one more thing we need, is we need to have a way to show this and, you know, let you know that this is happening. And so we're, eventually we're going to tie this into our interface, but for right now I'm going to show you a little shortcut you can use, and I, I highly encourage this when you're writing your software is don't feel like you have to always tie in the interface right away. Instead, we can come down here and type debug.log, and we're going to just go ahead and type here um, store count and put it into the middle of this function. And so this debug.log is going to show in our console, and, I, and we'll see that inside of Unity, what our current score count is. So every time you click the button, we're going to go up one, and there's our store count. Now there's one more thing that we have to do, is, is right now store assumes that all these uh, methods, the start, update, and buy store on click, are private, and they can only be accessed from within store. So we have to make this public. In other words, the button... The button needs to have a way to get to store. And so that's why we have this public buy store on click. So we're going to save this just like that. And now we've done everything we really need to do for our, our very first example here and um, inside of our code. Now we're going to jump back over to Unity down here. So I click to go back to Unity. And you'll see that over here on the right, our, our code is updated. Even though we can't change it over here, we can see that, that it has changed over here. Now, one of the things we can do is that if I open this canvas up in our store panel, we're going to want to make this store script available inside of Unity uh, uh, to, to the objects that, that it's, that it's going to be tied to. So it makes a lot of sense for us to have our store script here associated with our store panel because we're going to have multiple stores. Eventually we're going to have, you know, other stores other than lemonade stands. The whole idea of the tycoon game is to create more and more and more stores. So we're going to take this store 
C sharp script over here and just drag it over here into this panel. Now make sure that it's up here in the name is store panel and you just drag it in here like that. And so now this store script is actually tied to this, this uh, store panel. And now the one last thing we have to do is we have to tell this button to call the script. So in order to call this buy store on click, we need to tell our button to call it. So we're going to go into our buy store button, and you'll notice down here that there's an on click. And it says list is empty because we haven't associated anything with this. And I click this little plus button and you'll notice that the object here is none. And this is why it was important to tie our script to the panel because of the way that Unity works. It's expecting that object here. So I'm going to drag that store panel to right here. And then... I'm going to under this function choose store. So there's our our class that we created, our script that we created, and then you'll notice that right here is our buy store on click. So there's the method exposed. Now you'll notice the start is not in here, and neither is the update, and that's because they don't have that public on front of it. That's why we added that public right here to the front was so that it would be accessible to our button. And you'll see it right now here that the store panel object now has the store dot buy store on click event tied to it. So let's go ahead and run this and click buy store. Now this doesn't change. You don't see anything changing here. But if we go to console down here, notice this too. So you're going to want to click the console. And then every time I click buy store, notice how our store count goes up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So internally, we are keeping track of how many stores we're buying. So we, we're, we're basically incrementing this counter, and internally, the store class is keeping track of each store we buy. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to see how we can update our interface to show the store and the current number of stores we own.